I've worn out my toothbrush. Happy holidays, everyone. I love Christmas. It's such a lovey-dovey time of year. I love everything about it. And I love hot chocolate. It's that season for putting on warm, comfy clothes and looking out at the snow as it keeps falling. So you have to turn the heat on, which makes your electric bill go up. So you wind up running around the house like a crazy person wrapped in blankets so you can afford presents for everyone. When all they do is complain, you got me the green one, I wanted the blue one. All right, you know what? I thought if I started a review of a sappy, silly movie in a sappy, silly mood, I would like it better, but I don't think this is working. So let's just cut the crap. So it turns out there is a dumpster out back filled to the brim with Hallmark holiday movies. Sitting right on top today was Christmas at Cartwright's. Pretty sure this is gonna be just as formulaic as it looks. A relatable but quirky woman meets the perfect guy and not only is he taken or being chased by another woman, there is some other life circumstance that keeps the two apart. The man is falling for her the entire movie, most likely without realizing it until she reveals the big barrier at the end of the second act, which makes him mad at her somehow, but only for a little bit, and because she is an otherwise perfect human being, everything works out the end. Look at this guy. He's got that look that screams, why did I agree to do a Hallmark movie? 2014's Christmas at Cartwright stars Alicia Witt, Gabriel Hogan, Linda Cash, Gabrielle Miller, TJ McGibbon, and Wallace Shawn. And no, aside from Wallace Shawn, I have absolutely no idea who any of these people are. We apparently have Mrs. Alan Pearl from Waiting for Guffman and somebody from X-Men Apocalypse, but yeah. We start out with establishing shots of Chicago where Nikki is looking for a job as holiday help and is not having much success. Suddenly, she remembers a meeting with her daughter Becky's teacher. There's our quirk. She's late for one meeting. So you see, audience, she's a flawed, relatable human being, so it's okay to cheer for her to win at the end. An extremely shallow but not convincing meeting between the teacher and Nikki tells us that daughter Becky is perfect at everything except reading and spelling. The teacher suggests a tutor. Nikki can't afford one because she lost her job a couple of months ago. But I'm gonna get another job, and as soon as I do, you can rest assured I will make sure that Becky gets all the help she needs. Of course you will, because you're otherwise perfect. Becky sees her mother, and of course she is the perfect cute little kid who loves her mom. Talk with your teacher, she says you're a great girl. I told her she has to get to know you better. You did not. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Look how much fun they have together, it's so sweet. Oh, I think my teeth are rotting. I want you to get married again. What? Why? Because I want you to be happy. I am happy. I have you. Admit it, you're horny. Somehow it becomes a thing where Nikki says Bill would be a nice name for a guy. So Becky is going to find her a Bill to marry. Snowman! I, I love, love snowman. snowman! All right, we said at the same time, we got to make a wish. Becky finds a silver coin on the ground with an angel on it. She makes her mother take it for good luck. Another quirk. Nikki is late with the rent, so she is hiding from her landlord. And of course, she's not very good at it. See, audience, she's just like you, we swear. Nikki's not clearly named friend comes over and tells her that Cartwright's downtown is having open interviews for holiday help. Apparently, Cartwright's is a fancy schmancy store, so this nameless friend loans her a dress to wear to the interview. Becky makes sure that her mother has her lucky angel coin before heading downtown. Convenient quirk, she drops her resume, but it is picked up and returned by this fella, who begins chatting her up, much to the chagrin of this woman, who is apparently in charge of hiring. Uh-oh, the angels are slacking. What's gonna happen next? Clearly this woman is a bitch and passive aggressively insults Nikki, then cuts the interview short by not asking questions and making it obvious that she is not going to hire Nikki. As Nikki is attempting to leave, the elevator inexplicably stops on the second floor and will not leave. So she gets off of the elevator and winds up in a room with racks of Santa costumes. Then the door locks shut. Inconceivably, this guy shows up. Um, are you in the Santa suit yet? You better hurry, the children are down there waiting. Really? Millions of conflicts in the world to separate her from the obvious love interest that returned the resume and y'all picked this one? Oh, why the hell not? Yes, 
Oh, oh, just a minute. Lucky she had those hair clips with her. This guy turns out to be Harry Osborn, Christmas consultant from headquarters. Now, may I call you Santa? Santa or Nikki will do. Oh, I get it, because her name is really Nikki, and she's also playing Saint Nick. Ha ha ha, it's clever, screenwriters. Of course, kids are always this well-behaved when waiting for Santa in a Chicago department store. What dimension is this version of Chicago in? And we've got this lady. Peg Habershaw. Numero uno, Santa's helper. Bitch lady, otherwise known as Miss Fiona Aldridge, comes around with the real fake Santa. She gets embarrassed and overruled by Harry Osborn into taking the Santa he has and not the one she personally hired. This little girl asks for a snowsuit and sled for Christmas. But after a weird glance at Harry Osborn, Nikki suddenly tells the girl that she should get a bathing suit and beach toys instead for a California Christmas. Am I going to California? It's Santa magic. That's an amazing Santa. I didn't know I was going to California until a minute ago. My husband just texted me this message. Yes, but then she'll come back to Chicago and wish Santa hadn't talked her out of the warm clothes as it freezes until March. Well, I think I can arrange that. The eagle has landed. All systems go. Thank you, sir. Obviously, Harry is the angel from the lucky coin. However, if he were a halfway decent lucky angel, he could have gotten her a better job where she didn't have to lie. You sure know how to pick the perfect Santa. Well, I've learned uh, from the master. Wait, was that phone call supposed to be Santa or God? You know, whatever. Fiona does not like how Santa talked a kid out of buying a game console and into a ball and bat instead. My Santa is spreading goodwill for the store. Yeah, and maybe not trying to spread heart disease. Fiona wants a background check on Santa. Because she's evil, ooh. Nikki tells her friend that she is the store Santa and she has no idea how it happened. She runs into flirty guy at the coffee shop and he convinces her to join him for a moment. The obvious chemistry is interrupted by Fiona's arrival. Apparently, flirty guy thought this was a business meeting with Fiona, but she's laying it on awfully thick. What do we have to discuss again? There are going to be some changes to your department, but you know what? I don't want to worry about that right now. I wanted to um, let you know that I'm free this weekend. <laughs> and I, I just thought I'd ask you, you know, if you had any ideas of, of anything fun to do or... Oh, there's going to be changes to my department? Hey, how's it going, Santa? Hey, whoa. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet. Morning. Okay, that was really stupid, but it made me laugh anyway. At the school Christmas open house, Becky gathers all of the men named Bill and lines them up. Nikki tells her to stop it. But she's adorable. Admit she's adorable. At the Christmas tree lot, we of course run into Flirty Guy. Because it's the Christmas tree lot and surely he happens to be at the only tree lot in Chicago at the exact same time. We haven't been introduced, which is crazy. I'm Bill. Of course he is. Hear that, Mom? His name is Bill. Bill gives Nikki his card and tells her to call him if she needs help with the tree or anything else. Progressive, having the man give the woman his number. Good job, Hallmark. As a kid, I never understood why people clapped after plugging in the lights. Now I get it. They're applauding because they don't have to hunt down the one bad bulb that's making the entire string not work. Nikki and Token Best Friend talk about the guy and sum up the entire plot up to this point. Token best friend says to not tell Bill about her being Santa, and if it's meant to be, their relationship will pick up after the holidays when it's all over anyway. Bill starts talking to Santa, and somehow they discuss Bill's dating life and that he just met someone. She's a single mom. She's real pretty. It's you, sweetheart. Of course it's you. Funny, that background check that Fiona ordered on the new Santa keeps disappearing. Does she really have time for petty things like that over the holiday season at a department store? Becky's teacher offers her some free tutoring during lunch. But I don't want to tell my mom, okay? Oh? I want to get better at reading, then surprise her. Kind of like a Christmas present for her. For a very deserving mom. I've worn out my toothbrush. 
Nikki narrowly escapes having to ride the elevator with Santa's number one helper after work, but winds up in there with Bill instead. Oh, wonderful. Shut up, David Tennant. I didn't mean it. Please go on. Most pernicious woman. Bill pegs her as a lost Cartwright shopper and finally asks her out for the following night. Okay. Looking forward to some more night. Me too. Inconceivable. Of course, Nikki feels like she can't go out with Bill without telling him the truth. Token best friend seems hesitant about that. This is what I hate about these movies. Honesty is almost always the best policy in this type of situation. Nikki said earlier she'd be fired if Bill ever found out she was Santa, but why? Who says he'd care? Who says he'd tell anybody? I say tell him, and if he keeps your secret, then great. And if he doesn't, clearly you have the wrong Bill. Or should I say clearly he doesn't fit the Bill? <laughs> Seriously though, just tell him and see what happens. But then again, if you did that, you probably wouldn't have a movie, would you? Never mind. go on. Token best friend also tells Nikki that she will be her escape call just in case. Yes, escape call, that thing that everyone knows about when your friend calls you in the middle of a first date and if you want an out, you pretend it's an emergency and leave. I'm not revealing any code, everybody knows about it. It's not new and most people recognize it for what it is. Except this guy, I'm betting. Honesty, you know, very important to me. So. Hmm. Right there, the door is wide open. You will piss him off later when he inevitably finds out the truth, so you might as well just tell him now. Just do it. Sure enough, Nikki panics and uses the fake emergency call to get out of there. This is frustrating. Just be... Stop making drama for yourself. Token best friend says that Christmas will be over in a week, so maybe she should call Bill and reschedule a date for after the holidays. Okay, not ideal, but plausible. I don't want any stupid toys for Christmas. I want to move to Kansas. Right now! Every child's dream! So back at the lunchroom, Bill asks Santa for advice about this woman that ran out on his first date. Santa talks Bill into giving her a second chance. I think Becky just said her mom's friend was named Liz, so even if it's not, we're going with it. Everybody, meet Liz. Becky's teacher ends up bringing Becky to see Santa. Mom? Mm -hmm. Harry chases after Becky and explains to her what is going on. At home, Becky lies to her mother about Harry knowing who she is, but tells her that angels are real. I guess angels and Santa could exist in the same universe. Why not? Flying spaghetti monster, Zeus. It's an ecumenical world. This leads to Nikki calling Bill and rescheduling their date for December 27th. This is gonna bite her in the ass, you know it is. The next day, Harry gets a call from the big guy, whichever one he is. A short absence on my part will do absolutely no harm, I'm sure. No, those are always the truest words spoken in a movie. With Guardian Angel not nearby, an employee catches Nikki in the changing room, drags her upstairs, Bill happens into the room, Perky Elf happens into the room, and the truth comes out. I don't think our store needs the bad publicity. So if I were you, I would just leave right now before I change my mind. Wouldn't it be worse publicity if you fired your most popular Santa a few days before Christmas? Nikki is, of course, freaking out. I pretended to be something that I'm not. I got news for you. Most Santas are. Most. The landlord bursts in and shows them this totally real news report about Nikki being fired. Santa's number one helper comes over with a pizza and says she forgives her for lying and wants to have a little girl talk, which we don't get to see. Okay, I hope that went well. Nikki runs into Bill, who of course understands why she did what she did. I just wish you'd had enough faith in me to think I'd understand. Yeah, so they're not gonna go out again, even though he said he understood and he meant he values honesty in a relationship when your partner is two-timing and he did not mean it about a mother trying to provide for her child? Still not together for some reason, okay. Mr. Cartwright, of course, fires Fiona for being stupid. You had to see that coming. Total bitches always get fired in movies. Not in real life, but in perfect movies. Maybe I want to live in this dimension. Nikki is called in by Mr. Cartwright. Nikki explains how she got the job because Harry Osborne mistook her for the person hired to play Santa. Harry Osborne? You're a Christmas consultant. <laughs> we don't have a Christmas consultant. That's when Nikki figures out that Harry is really an angel. She runs out of the meeting to talk to her daughter. 
That should have been able to wait till after the interview when Mr. Cartwright is probably gonna offer you Fiona's old job so now you can work with Bill and win him back. And because company policy says employees can't date, you can't do anything about it. Hmm. Becky explains that yes, Harry was an angel and that's the only important thing she says and we already know that so that's really not that important, I guess. The news tells us that Nikki is back as the store Santa and now Bill is bitter. Santa's number one helper pulls Bill aside to win him back over for Nikki. Sarah, the secretary, tells Nikki that Mr. Cartwright wants to see her. I'm offering you the job as head of special events right here at Cartwright's, permanently. You'll have your own office, secretary, benefits, and a substantial hike in pay. And it's Fiona's old job. Woohoo! <laughs> what? Seriously? You didn't see that coming? Oh, that's right. You're a perfectly flawed human being. Liz assures Nikki that she will have time to win Bill back now that she is working with him. But of course, she doesn't have to because here comes Bill. Can, can I steal your mom for, for just one second? Yes, please. That's not really stealing so much as standing in the same spot and kissing after only half a date. And the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. I'll read you the rest tomorrow, Mom. You're crying too much. Of course, Harry was right there when he needed to be all along. Duh. So why is this movie in the dumpster? Well, that's easy. It's one of many Hallmark television movies with the same sappy format. So why do they keep making them if they already have so many with the same basic plot? Because these movies make people feel good. Maybe they're a bit of a guilty pleasure for people, but when reality is so, well, shitty, sometimes we want to escape to a world where everything goes the way it should, where villains get their comeuppance, and despite some obstacles that need to be overcome, the well-deserving protagonist gets everything and more at the end. That doesn't always happen in real life. In fact, it rarely happens, but sometimes movies like these give people hope that it can happen to them too. It gives them a scenario to replace the worst case one running through their heads before they go to sleep at night, or the motivation to continue on because it just might work out at the end. If you are a fan of a typical feel-good Christmas movie and are willing to overlook a little cheesy dialogue and gaping holes in reality once in a while, then Christmas at Cartwright's is one of many, many films you can check out. Why do they keep making them if they have so many with the same basic plot? So many people drive around on my street and aren't watching them. Inconceivable. <laughs>